What is going on YouTube? Today we're talking about how to make your entire gallery look consistent in Lightroom and we're going to customize this image going through each setting in Lightroom and then we're going to make everything look awesome. So let's get started. So I did this engagement shoot a while back and the images look awesome. We did it during sunset so we had a lot of backlighting with the sun. So the first thing I always do is customize my white balance. So uh, you can tell he had a really blue shirt. So if I make it too blue, then uh, you know their shirts turn a lot more blue. So I like to make things a little warmer, especially because we had an organic shoot having the sun in the background. And then I, I, can, I like putting in a little bit of magenta into the photos just to start it off. So right now the exposure looks pretty good and I don't want to adjust too many things because I'm going to be applying this preset to all of the images. We have about 50 images in this shoot. So the next, the first thing I like to do is go to my S curve. I like to keep the highlight shadows, whites and blacks. I leave them alone right away, but then I go to the S curve right away because I that's where all the stylizing comes, at least for me. Usually I like to kind of make a consistent little curve, a nice line instead of a, I could add points all throughout it and adjust everyone, but I think it starts to look really jagged and some parts of the, of the tones and the shadows will look really like washed out and then too dramatically contrasted and it looks really bad. So I like to add usually one or two points and then I, I'll bring up the shadows a little bit actually and kind of make it that washed out look. Cool. I'm just gonna put the exposure up a little bit because I like to start with what I want. Um, you could experiment by putting another point on. So that actually looks pretty good. I, I kind of like that look. Um, don't go too crazy, but uh, yeah, that's looking awesome so far. And then next what I like to do is kind of adjust, I want to take some of the greens out of the midtones, and then I want to add some warmth in the midtones. So by adding warmth, you pull down the blues a little bit. All right, that's looking good so far. Um, you could go crazy with these S curves, but uh, I don't like to go too crazy because they can really start to change your image quite a lot. Uh, I'm going to bring up the highlights, I'm going to bring up the shadows, I'm going to bring up the whites, and then I'm going to bring down the black. So what I love doing personally on a lot of my images is bringing up the shadows on the S-curve, but then bringing down the blacks on the image. So it still has a very nice contrast, but you can see that um, the shadows are still like washed out just a tiny bit, but it still has that contrast. So it's the best of both worlds. It's not too washed out and doesn't look too hipster, but uh, it also has a great contrast look to it. So right now it looks a little too warm, so I'm going to bring the white balance just a tad down. Um, the one downside about white shirts, sometimes, depending on your white balance, you, there's a lot of blue in a shirt, so this is how we're going to get rid of it. So next is the HSL. So there's two ways to get rid of the kind of the bluey tone. Um, the first one is to up the saturation, uh, I mean bring down the saturation of the blues. So now you can see that if you bring down all the way, then it looks too warm on a shirt. So I'm going to bring down a little bit and then upping the brightness of the blues, which is the luminance. So if I go to blue now, you can see that the white is very, I mean, the blue is now kind of more white because it's actually brighter. We're just brightening up the color of just the blues. So that's how I like to do a lot of my photos because then you don't see a lot of blue in people's white shirts, which I really hate. The next thing I love doing is adjusting the skin tone. So you can do this in two ways. If you click this button here, this is going to be a selective point. So if you click on the greens, it's only going to bring the saturation up and down of the greens. Um, and then if you select the skin tones, it's only going to bring up and down the saturation of the skin tones. Um, skin tones are tricky. It's definitely a stylized thing. Once you pick a style of how you like to do skin tones, kind of stick to it because uh, that's what's going to make things really consistent. What I personally love doing is bring up the luminance of skin tones. And that means you're just bringing up the brightness of the oranges and of what their skin colors are. So I love doing that because it kind of just makes it light and airy. And then in addition, I like bringing up the saturation of their skin tones too because you're making it brighter. And then you're bringing color to their skin instead of it being like muted where they kind of look really pale and like they've been surviving in a winter cave for 10 years. So next, I like to change the luminance and saturation of the greens. Um, I like my greens to be a little muted, but not too much like the hipster uh, photos these days. And then you can add a little bit of styling. Because this photo shoot was during sunset, I'm gonna change the hue of the yellows to the left a little bit. So it kind of just looks a little more warmer than it does looking green. A little, a little more yellow than it does looking green. If you bring all the way to the right, you can see now all those yellows are more green. But if you bring 
it all to less. Then it looks a little more like it's that cool, very warm. So right now that looks pretty good. If you click right here, you're gonna see is everything standard, reset it. And that's the difference. You can see it. we just added a lot of style to this photo, um, just with the HSL and color transitions. And then if you click the S curve off, that's on, that's off. Again, it's another amazing way to stylize your photo um, to have a really cool S curve with slight changes in the red, green, and blue um, S curves as well. Next, we're gonna go to split toning. This is one you can actually add it. It's, it's a more basic way of what we did in the HS, in the RGB, but now it's just kind of like more of a blank way to add a lot of um, warmth in the highlights. And I don't like to go too crazy. Usually like add usually three on the highlights and I like to add in warmth. And then to contrast that, I like adding cold into the shadows and usually two or three. You want these changes to be really subtle. And then once you've clicked your two favorite split toning, so you can go more to the left, you can see that balance is more cold to warmth. And then if you go to the right, it's more warmth to cold. And I'm liking the warmth to cold. So it's really, really subtle, so I'll turn it off. That's what it looks like without the changes and then with the changes. You can see it just adds kind of like a little hint of warmth, which is really nice. Sharpening, I like to sharpen just a little bit and then add a little bit of masking because, you know, who doesn't like sharp images? But I don't like to go too crazy. Um, definitely add in a lens correction, which I should have done before. Uh, I like to leave leveling off. Effects will leave off. You won't touch any of that. No dehazing or anything. Um, camera calibration can get kind of tricky sometimes, depending on your lens and your camera gear and whatnot. But uh, to get kind of that warm and teal look, if you go to blue primary and switch the hue of the primary to the left, you can see it really starts to add it, that really cool warmth um, and that orange and teal look. So, and then uh, really I just kind of like playing with these settings. Um, it's very technical of what the cal camera calibration does, but I like to make them very subtle changes. So usually I just bring the saturations down of each color and this is, before and that's what the change is so it kind of just changes the look quite a bit all right now we're going to apply that setting to all the photos now the goal of keeping everything consistent is applying one preset to all your photos keeping the same s curves the same changes to the colors the same tone changes uh, the same split toning because that's what's going to make everything consistent if you have five photos with a different s curve and then five photos with a different s curve and five photos with different hsl colors it's not gonna look consistent. So this is how you sync all of your photos to the same settings. Um, you go to the photo that you want all the settings to be adjusted to everything, and you go to the sync button. You go to check all. So basically it's gonna adjust all these settings to the rest. So if you click synchronize, now it's gonna apply this photo to all these photos. So you can see all these photos are now changing on the bottom, which is awesome. And now when we go through the photos, uh, this is the next part of my workflow. I click exposure. And then all I do is adjust the exposure for each photo. I go through all these photos and just change the exposure because that means everything else is going to stay the same, but I'm just changing the brightness. So that is the before and that is the after. You can see it's a really dramatic difference. And I personally really like the stylized that went into these photos. Um, it's really warm and kind of open and airy, but still has a really nice um, contrast to it. It's not too much contrast, but it still has that, the washed out shadows a little bit. A nice tip too is if you have three photos that have the same brightness or the same settings or what I like to do is during a wedding ceremony is shoot in the same settings despite if one part of the room looks darker than the other because when you get to editing and you have three photos in a row, you can click all three and if you turn on auto sync, if you change the brightness up on one photo, it'll adjust it to the other two photos or however many photos you selected and now it really speeds up your workflow so, and it's all going to look the same. So now. Uh, this photo, this photo, and this photo have all been uh, changed at the same time. So there you have it guys, we just edited an entire photo shoot using one photo's preset to the entire series. A quick tip, if you want to use that preset for the next uh, photo shoot that you do, you can go up here to click plus on presets, and then you can name it um, Engagement Sunset. 
and then you can save that and use that in another photo shoot that you guys want to use. Um, it's really awesome to keep your photos consistent. Um, it was a huge lesson I learned throughout my photography career. Once I started having a consistent style on all my photo shoots, um, people started recognizing my work and wanting to book me for me, not just for me to push a button. They wanted my work, my style, my consistency. So that was a huge perk. And you can make different presets for receptions only, for sunsets, for midday shoots, and kind of keeping your S curves and other stuff the same, but maybe you want to change the way your white balances or the way you use the S-curve on sunsets versus different lighting situations. So you can have like five presets to your style, but they change a little bit. And we'll talk about that in other videos, but I just wanna make a quick video on how I keep my sh photo shoots consistent in one photo shoot. Um, that was a huge, I wish I learned this when I first started. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video on how to keep your photo shoots consistent by applying one preset to the entirety of your photo shoot. If you guys have any questions below, feel free to ask them below. I will be giving away this preset for free as well, so you guys can download that below, and I'll come up with a bunch of other free presets I've made in other previous videos. And if you guys wanna learn more about the Only Look community group, uh, it is an awesome little Facebook community that we're growing to help other photographers just like you learn and master your camera Lightroom and just kind of hang out on the internet because who doesn't like that? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them below and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.